All right, yes, yes, uh, I'd like to thank all of you for, for coming here today uh, for our, our second training. And you're the first one, you'll be here again. Um, uh, but we are going to be talking today, well, they're going to be talking today about uh, the epidemic of fentanyl. And it's scary, it's very scary. Uh, and also uh, what one can do to help try to prevent an overdose through the use of, a, of Narcan or a, Naloxone. All right, Naloxone. As I have a picture. If you have questions, please be sure to ask the questions. If you're in Zoom land again, please be sure to, to ask the questions and I will ask them uh, for you. And I would just like to introduce our, our, our speakers today. One is Catherine Neal. Catherine Neal is the person who normally runs our who runs our FOL program here at the campus. Does all sorts of stuff, all sorts of every month is always sorts of things to help uh, our students out and our employees as well in all sorts of areas. And we also have uh, Dr. Melissa McCarthy, who is going to be the primary speaker today. She goes around doing a lot of trainings. You do too, right? Not as much as her, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and so with that being said, thank you all for being here. Thank you. all your, your faces because I'm here all the time so we just want to thank you guys for being here today as he said I'm Catherine Neal Thomas I'm the FOL program director this program has been going on for almost 10 years it is grant funded by the state and we are up for renewal soon so fingers crossed guys because I love being here on campus with you all um, and I've been in this position for almost six years now, so y'all have been stuck with me for a while, um, and I appreciate you guys for that. But um, yes, today we are going to educate you on what's going on in the world today and how we can save lives or attempt to save lives. And I will give the floor to you, Dr. Melissa McCarthy. And you know, technology, it, sometimes it works, and of course, when you have to present, sometimes it doesn't want to. But make sure you guys get the most out of it. Yes, 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 yes. Sorry. Whenever we shut it down, it didn't say the name, it didn't say Catherine's name. That's okay. okay. That's just a preview of what all you're going to get. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of information, but it's good. It's okay. important stuff. Okay, first off, thank y'all for being here. It's amazing. I love Weatherford. I live here. I love the campus. You guys are great. Uh, just a little bit about Challenge of Tarrant County. Challenge of Tarrant County is actually the mothership, <clears throat> the administrator for all what Catherine does. Where we have follow our lead, which is here. We have Smart, which is Arlington ISD. We have SMART, which is UTA Arlington, SOAR, which is at uh, Eagle Mountain in Saginaw, Challenge Us, Power to Choose is at TCU, Stay on Track is at Color ISD, Challenge Institute is actually where we do all of our trainings from. Challenge has been in uh, the field since 1984. We are fully funded by grants. We do, we do everything. One side of the house is alcohol and drug or alcohol and substance misuse, uh, awareness, self-harm, I self-harm, good grief, uh, harm reduction and prevention work. So we do it at the colleges, universities, and the communities. The other side of our house is we are the administrators for family recovery for, for Tarrant County. So we do a lot of challenge. But right now we're doing a lot of fentanyl awareness and hey, faces, I know, I know some people, I love that. We're doing a lot of work with the lock zone training and fentanyl. And if you're recording, I know you're recording it when you edit. This has got some of the information that was not in the first one, so this will be the best one to keep. Uh, okay, so challenge you all. We educate the community, mobilize resources. A little bit about me. My name is Melissa McCarthy. I do have a PhD in counselor education supervision. I'm an LPCS. Uh, my background is trauma, complex trauma with adolescents and young adults mostly. I've worked in the state, disaster behavioral health or to detention centers, uh, a lot of campus. I've been a professor. I absolutely love what I do now. I'm the director of prevention programming here at uh, Challenge Center County. You'll see me on campus. I'm here uh, a lot. 
Okay, so today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the opioid crisis, signs and symptoms of overdose, response to an overdose, how to administer naloxone, and then Senate Bill 1462. I always want to start with, do, are there any medically trained people here? EMT, uh, PD, there you go. Mm -hmm. I know, I recognize you all. Okay, good, <coughs> that helps, me. that helps. Speak up, if I say anything out loud, if I say anything, if I just say something, help me out. Uh, I'm always open to that, I learn a lot from you all. All right, so uh, the opioid epidemic started back in the 1990s. We discovered opioid was good to relieve <coughs> pain reliever. It really is a good drug used correctly, pain reliever. But in the 90s, we were told that it was not, did not have an addictive uh, characteristic to it whatsoever. We learned really fast <coughs> that it did. It had an addictive behavior. It it has a really good high, a euphoric high. It's a pain reliever, but it's highly addictive. By 2017, HHS declared it a state of emergency because we had so much addiction to opioids. Back in 2017, uh, RX misuse, RX is prescription drug, as well as on the street opioids. Okay? A little bit different than what we have now, but I'd like to give you some history. Okay, so the most commonly used opioids, if you look through this list, you're going to see something. If you've ever had a tooth pull, a root canal, a broken bone, a surgery. You might have been given some something. Vicodin, not, not so much anymore. The yellow is what you really see a lot of right now. The blue will make more sense in a minute. That's our street drug in 30s. And fentanyl is in red because that's what we're going to talk about. But these are the opioids <clears throat> prescription drugs that are mostly used and prescribed at this time. Okay, forms of fentanyl. Pharmaceuticals, the pharmaceuticals are the ones that are pure. They are made in laboratories that are highly regulated. I mean, they're in their jumpsuits, clean, stainless steel, they got it going, okay? White powder is, is, also, uh, is also fentanyl, but it is also street. And DEA has now said that they've seen yellow powder. I'll talk a lot about the DEA. We work very closely with the DEA. The DEA has got a, uh, one of the largest labs in Dallas, Texas. Matter of fact, we'll be at the DEA tomorrow night in Arlington. We'll be with MedStar and the DEA tomorrow night. So uh, they'll bring the latest information, more so than what I have here. But they, they've started seeing some yellow powder. And then your counterfeit pills. That's what's on the street. Okay? That's your forms. I want to give you some origin and some back backstory to fentanyl. I'm not past my marker. They told me I can't pass that. I'm a walker. I go everywhere. Get that I can. But anyway, it was developed in 59. 1959, uh, basically in for operating rooms, are large animals. They found out in the 60s that they could use a patch. How many, how many of you ever seen a patch? <coughs> okay. Uh, my, uh, I know a lot of people that have gone through cancer or different chronic pain that they'll put a patch on. Okay, well that's developed in the 60s because we learned that it's a quick onset. Fentanyl happens really quick. That's why they use it in the operating room is because they can bring you twilight and bring you right back up. It's a short term uh, 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 sedative, pain reliever, but they can bring you right back up really quickly. It's relatively uh, low risk for not only cardio, but an allergic reaction. It's reduced risk overall medically because they can bring you down and bring you right back up so quickly. You're not under for hours and hours, unless you have a surgery that requires that. Legally manufactured and distributed in the United States, highly, highly regulated uh, labs. I don't have the pictures of the labs on here, but it's, it's amazing how you could probably lick off the tables. They're so clean. They, they know what they're doing. And I stress this because we're going to move into what the street drugs look like. Approved by the FDA, it's Schedule II narcotic. 
Does anybody know what it means when it's a scheduled narcotic, especially a Schedule II? Tell us. But it's yes. uh, well, it's a DEA classification, mm -hmm. and the schedules are the, the way I read it is the DEA classifications are, are for the um, punishment phase. <laughs> that's the only that's the only way I know them. As, as to as to what 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 you the punishment you're going to get for possession of a class one, class two, or class three. <laughs> that's perfect. And it's scheduled so that they not only watch where the drug's going, who's getting the drug, but who's prescribing it. So they know what's going on with it. I used to work at Cardinal Distribution, which was, uh, it's a manu not manufacturer, but through the middleman to move drugs. And this was a long time ago. But our schedules were in a cage. And you could not get into this cage unless you had the highest clearance. I mean, it's scheduled and regulated and you knew where every pill went. Okay, so pharmaceuticals again. These are the forms, there's a, a, what they call a lollipop, it's a lozenge. <coughs> it looks, I don't have a picture of it, it's like a little square that you can give. Uh, your uh, tablets, tablets, there's a spray, the patch, and then the, of course, the injectable form that you'll find at, usually on ambulances, uh, surgery centers. Okay, fentanyl illicit analog. The word analog means it's been tainted, it's been messed with. It's been added to, it's been altered at some level. Okay? It's often altered just enough where you still get the feel good, but it's altered with deadly, it's been altered with rat poison, it's been altered with vitamin, vitamin D, it's been altered with detergent. It's been altered with all types of fillers to make the pill. So this is what your, your I'm gonna call them street drugs, for lack of a better word. That's what your uh, illegal drugs are made out of. They're very similar, but they're not the same. There's enough in it to keep you addicted, but they're not the same. It mimics the pharmacological effects. Oftentimes, it's a better high. We'll talk about that in a minute, too. Precursor ingredients are coming from China. Now, China was told back in 2019 that they had to stop making fentanyl legally. They were making it legally. They were told. We pushed them and said no. However, they still can make the uh, ingredients. So that's where your cartels are getting it. They get their ingredients there, and they bring it over, and they create it here. They mix it up and create it just like this. Marketed, it looks just like legal uh, opioids and benzoids. And the, the, the thing is, once the brain, and we're going to talk about this later too, but once the brain is uh, introduced to this, it alters the chemicals and you want more. You want more. So uh, the, the user will continue to seek for something more potent. And oftentimes, if it's a one-time person that's asked for a pill one time because they couldn't get through their test, or they're in a stressful part of their life, a transitional issue or something going on in their home, or their life, they have no tolerance. That's where death comes. Okay, so this, at the very top, is a press. These can be bought at Amazon Prime and delivered to your front door. This is actually where, these are uh, Xanax bars. That's actually the press where it comes down. Now, what happens is whenever the cartel uh, or whomever is mixing the pills, they put it like in a big 55-gallon drum, we've seen them, and they're just mixing it, okay? So they're mixing fentanyl. You have no idea how much fentanyl you are getting in whatever pill that you're getting. Right now, it's three out of every five has a lethal amount of fentanyl in it, which is just over two milligrams, which fits on the tip of a pencil. You have no idea. They, the uh, the lab, uh, the lady of the, over the lab, she likens it to making chocolate chip cookies. You know, you're not going to count out ten, uh, 10 chips per. You're just going to get whatever you mix and put down there. So you don't know which three of the five pills now are deadly. So it's a crapshoot when you buy. It's a crapshoot. But depending on the person's body size, tolerance, and past usage, 
10 milligrams will, will kill you. At least put you in an overdose. Oh, to kind of uh, put that into perspective as well, I like DEA uh, Sergeant, uh, Sergeant, uh, Agent in Charge Chavez. He says he uses this uh, sugar pill or sugar pack. If this was full of fentanyl, this would have enough in it to kill 500 people. It does not take much in the pills. <clears throat> so, I like the visual. All right, so fentanyl is 100 times more potent than morphine and 50 times more potent than heroin. Okay, what they're doing, here you go, six out of 10 pills. This is a real pill that's been broken down to show you how little amount it takes. That's a pill with the fentanyl uh, in it. And that's all it takes for a lethal. What happens with the fentanyl, you know, I told you that they are, uh, these dealers are smart. They're business smart. And it's a shame they can't, you know, curtail that in a fashion that would be more positive. But they have started adding something called xylazine. Xylazine, does anybody have any idea even what that word is? I didn't. I could have cared. I wish I didn't know what it meant. Xylazine is a tranquilizer for very large animals like elephants. They add it to this fentanyl to give legs to the high. So my pill is better than his pill because my high will be longer. You come off it harder and it's, a, it's bad, but your high is better. So they've been adding xylazine and we've seen that here. Okay, that's just a little something. Fentanyl, one person dies every five minutes from an overdose. Fentanyl is the number one killer of people 18 to 45 years old. That's our students here. That's us. Well, well, 45 minutes. <laughs> I can say this. It exceeds COVID, car accidents, cancer, gun violence, and suicide. It is an epidemic. We're there. More stats. 81,000 opioid deaths in 2021. These are the latest numbers. 1368 opioid related deaths in Texas in 2019. 2021, it was 2506, which is an 83% increase. Texas, 2022, fentanyl, not opioids, fentanyl killed 2,100 Texans, which is a 500% increase. Now, that's a lot, but we're learning how to uh, do a better job, but not do a better job, uh, recognizing that we need toxicology reports that only look for this. Because not all, like if, if, uh, if a loved one passed and I asked for an autopsy, unless I specifically asked for this autopsy, I'm not gonna get it. So they could say they aspirated, they could say they had a stroke, they could say all kinds of things that could have been caused by fentanyl, but unless they run this particular toxicology report, you're not gonna know. Okay, so some more little, uh, this is a brand new study. It was brand new the day that I came last week. Uh, 2023 from Yale Medicine. Uh, 13 to 21, it increased 3,740%. 17% included uh, benzos and cocaine. 18 to 21, it increased by 290%, and this is the they're all sad, but look at this, zero to four-year-olds, 590%. They're getting into their parents' gummies. They're getting offered it on the playground. It's out there. 2021, 40 infant deaths and 93 one to four-year-olds. This does not take into account, this is a new stat that we just learned of last week too, is our fur babies. Our animals can't digest this stuff either. So they've started kind of keeping up with that too. Just one more. Most children have no priority. Most children, most young adults, most users even. Well, the, the users have the, but I was gonna say, the, the users have no idea how much 
fentanyl is out there is what I was going to say. But most children and young adults have no prior opiate use. It's a one time, it's a one pill can kill kind of thing. Like I said, they're stressed out about life. They're on the internet trying to find something that will calm them down. So here, take this pill. Uh, left within reach, that's the gummies. Lack of awareness that it's laced. As much as we've got this on the news and as much as we're out there, as much as other people are out there doing the same training that I'm doing, you still have this perception that it's not that dangerous. I've always smoked marijuana is what you're here. I've always vaped. I've never had Sprite. can't happen to me. It's not going to happen to me. My folks have done it. I get my stash from my uncle. Okay, but data shows. You know, I, we don't ever preach from, or we don't ever teach from a fear base. I, these are all facts. Uh, but we still have a lack of an awareness. Yeah. Roughly 60% of the deaths took place at the person's residence. Every one of, we've got a big campaign on challenge, uh, challengetc.org, our <coughs> Facebook page for Red Ribbon, and every parent on there that lost a child was in the home, right? Every one of them was in the home. Two-thirds with a bystander present. My really good friend, Catherine's really good friend, Callie Crow, I'll talk just very briefly about her. She is a 30-year vet EMT, she still is. She has Drew's 27 chains. She lost her son Drew to a fentanyl overdose. Drew had a history of, of, uh, of substance misuse, but was getting better and trying. Drew, this, uh, Drew went to UT, UNT and had just gotten home from Narcan training, brought the Narcan home and put it beside the bed. Didn't tell his wife what it was or anything, took a pill and OD. Narcan sitting right there, she had no idea. Yeah. Are the gummies prescription though that you're talking about? The, it's not. Okay. Not the gummies. Gummies are THC. And it is now, we have found it in marijuana, THC, and it's in vape cartridges. They can lace it anywhere. Like I think once that you can get at the gas station or start. Head shops. Yeah. Yeah, head shops. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, you don't know that's not right. <laughs> They're not FDA approved. They're not FDA approved. Yeah, a great point. Forty-one percent has other mental health conditions or treatment for substance use disorder. And one out of four Texans have experienced an overdose or know somebody who has. You don't have to raise your hand, but well, because of our field, I know a lot of them. But if I wasn't in this field, I would still know people who had suffered. We may not have called it fentanyl then, but that's what it's been for the last year. Okay, overdose deaths linked to synthetic have tripled in the teenagers in the past two years and has quadrupled in our black teenagers. Okay, so report, uh, reporting challenges. This is what I was talking about. We, we know the numbers are probably higher because you have some, you have, okay, for instance, Callie tells this story that she was on EMT, they had a call that a five-year-old was down. So they roll up and they go into the room, bunk beds, everything, the five-year-old that is down, the three-year-old's playing, the mom's standing there. They work on the five-year-old, they get the, the five-year-old revived, the three-year-old goes down. They get the three-year-old revived and ask mom, what the hell? And it was gummies. It was gummies. So they get both children to the hospital, get them stable, everything's fine. Well, Kelly always looks. She can't for HIPAA reasons and different, you know, she can't go back and check on them. But she likes to look at the ME reports to see if, if anything had happened. Can they learn something? Did anything happen? And the five-year-old had passed. And they called it aspiration. Asp aspiration. Yeah, I always said that wrong. Yeah. Okay. But it was probably... I use this story only to say we know that it was underreported. We know that now. We have worked for over a year with JPS and ERs and trauma doctors. I say we. We as a community, Tarrant County, Parker's part of it too, 
uh, trying to do better with uh, reporting this and stay within the rights of the people. This is what's hard, is that you don't want to stigmatize those who are battling addiction, yet you want to be able to find out where they are and help them. So what they've created now, we've got grants through uh, the state and resource recovery. They now can identify the people who successfully have been reversed, go to their home, take them Narcan, and train them. That's new. That's new within the last three, three months, six, four months. That's brand new. But we have that now. We have that 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 person can be <coughs> is reversed. So our numbers are better, not just on deaths, but they're also doing uh, MedStar, they're doing what they call hot mapping. So we can give you zip codes where we know it's very prevalent. Not to go in there and beat you over the head, but to start policing the area, you know? So anyway, we, we know they're working on it because we know that it does not show up on a traditional toxicology report. It has to be very specific, and the problem in lies is this third point, is the variety of the drug, the way they, they are changing up the drug, adding to, take away, enough to make it still fentanyl, but this and that and this and that. The toxicology report testing is extremely challenging. At the end of COVID, well, are we ever really at the end of COVID, but the end of COVID, it was really, really rough because we weren't getting toxicology, toxicology reports for six to eight months because they were so backlogged. Because COVID hit us and hit us hard. Uh, so anyway, so that's the reporting. All right, there's your fentanyl, there's your DEA. This is what they're seeing. These are M30s, blue M30s, oxycodone, oxycontin. Fentanyl is mixed with codeine, heroin, and meth. You will hear people say, oh, I take meth. I'm not worried about fentanyl. Okay, it's mixed. Has the potential to be mixed. Cocaine, potential to be mixed. Marijuana, THC, potential to be mixed. Because they are mixing everything. And this is what it looks like. This will kill thousands, millions of people right here. As much as this is right here. Okay. So, legitimate and fake pills. Criminal drug networks. Okay, we're moving into kind of the, the pills. Is there any questions or any thoughts so far? It's a lot. Okay. Mass produced fake pills. Even if they are, produce them in the back alleys. They're mass produced. Falsely marketed, raw materials. I was telling you, come from China. It takes around 13 cents to produce one M30 they can sell it for $2.50 to $30. That's a heck of a return on investment. I mean, they're business people. They don't care. We hear all the time. Why are they killing their supplier? Because yeah. there's always somebody else. You know, and it, it used to be whenever uh, people would need to find drugs, they'd say, okay, who's your marijuana source? It's not like that anymore. It's, you have one person for everything. You want marijuana, fine, I've got the best marijuana. You want in 30s I've got them. You want opioids, I've got it. You want Xanax, I've got it. It's one place, one, one stop shop. Okay. Oh, I, look, to me, when I first saw this, I thought the fake, look how clean and pure that fake is. That's a fake and that's a authentic. But see, you buy that stamp, that M, kind of ruins my name now. My name's Melissa. I can't buy that M anymore because it's on all these. But there, that's a stamp. You buy that, that line, you buy that 30. And then they stamp them. So that's your M30s. So that's what's on the street prevalent right now. All right, this is a fake Xanax on the left. See how close they are to the bars? Oxycontin. Vicodin, Adderall. In 2022, the EA sees more than 50.6 million fake pills. That's where they found out. When we started this over a year ago, it was two out of five. 
beginning of this year in January, they said, uh-uh, the DEA released and it said three out of five. So yeah, six out of 10, Russian roulette. When the kids come in the door, they have these parties and I still don't want to call. Oh, anyway, they, get, they come in the party and there's a, a bowl of pills on one side, just pills, everybody brings their pills. Some may be RX. Somebody might have gotten their parents, you know, you may get an RX pill. Drop, pick, drop your phone, or not your phone, drop your keys, pick up a pill and go. So you're gonna take a chance of what's in that. And those pills are all, I mean, those parties are all over the place now. They're on every campus, they're everywhere. You know, we, one of our uh, Keller ISD, they do a not my kid, not my kid syndrome. And they do a presentation not like this, but very similar on, yes, it could be your kid. Not meaning to, we're not saying your kids are bad. We're just saying they don't really know what they're doing out there. Their brains aren't even developed. 14 years old, but developed to the 25, that impulsivity area of the brain. Okay, so Leo, here we go with the <coughs> authentic. There's your M30s again. Here are the street names. Uh, the biggest ones are 30s or blues. You know, uh, they call them 80s oxy. They're not going to call them oxys. Most of the time, it's going to be a blue or a 30. This is your Adderall, your ADHD. Why this one's so big right now is that we have a legitimate shortage of Adderall, of pharmaceutical Adderall. So we were so concerned when we heard that a couple of months ago that now people would go out to the street to find Adderall. Because if you've ever been around anybody ADHD that really needs the Adderall, they really need the Adderall. So this is really big now. Uh, Abby's, Addie's. All right, car fits on. I wanted to bring this up. I called the DEA last week when I put this on my slide and said, have we seen it yet? And she said, no, but. I said, okay, the but's all I need. Carfentanil is deadly. This is an a, a illicit, this is an a, a analog, this is a derivative of the fentanyl. It's a longer high, it's a stronger high, but look at this, it's one of the most potent opioids. This is used for very large animals. It is 10,000 times more potent. Remember the other one was 100? Fentanyl is 100? This is 10,000 more potent than than morphine, a hundred times more than fentanyl, and 50 times more heroin. And look, it only takes that much to kill you versus these. This is what our cartel's running down the street. <clears throat> it's coming. It's coming. I only let y'all know, just so you know, that the dialing you'll hear now, car fentanyl's right behind. Okay, rainbow fentanyl, this is what they brought out in October of last year. I don't know if y'all around Halloween, they started showing what, what they, uh, they like sprees. Mm -hmm. That's it, because they are, they don't care. They'll hook our babies, they don't care. Okay, where are they getting it? Any of us, where, you go to bed every night with the World Wide Web. I say it's the biggest shopping center out there. You can pull up anything, and guess what? Siri is tracking what you're doing. Uh -huh. It was the creepiest uh -huh. thing. I was telling my, I was on my phone and I told my daughter-in-law, I'm going to go to HEB in a little bit, blah, blah, blah. And I might tell my daughter, later. I get out in my car and Matt said, you are 5.3 miles from HEB. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, they're called analog. I mean, they're called analogs. They're called alg algorithms. They know what you're looking for. So even if your child, your sweet, precious child, I know I have a 29-year-old sweet, precious boy. He, he gets to hear all of this. He heard it this morning. You know, uh, anyway, even if they're not searching, it will come to them. It'll pop up. Hey, kid, you want, you want to calm down? If they're searching, how do I pass this test? Hey. For a stress reliever, it happens, it pops up. They know what they're doing. Okay, so, and this is straight from DEA's website. You guys have the link, Dr. T has the link. 
uh, where you can download all this, but those are the fake prescription emojis. And Instagram is still big, Snapchat, Facebook Messenger. Uh, so that's where they're getting it. And that's a, trans that's a transaction. I remember, I mean, my son's 29, so I remember when he was 16, what, 13 years ago, I would give him a little bit of money on a card and let him buy games on the internet. Oh, I don't know that I would do that now. Because guess what they might be buying now? Mm -hmm. no? Or, hey, let's meet at Whataburger. Okay, so that's where they're getting. All right, now we're in transition into uh, Naloxone. Any questions, any thoughts? Okay, 2015, I find that very interesting, it's 2015, especially where we are now. Senate Bill 1462. Senate Bill 1462 is the Senate bill that actually uh, allows this to be an open prescription, meaning naloxone, anybody can walk up to a pharmacist and ask for naloxone without a prescription. This is the blanket prescription. It protects the prescriber, the doctor. It also is your good Samaritan, even if you've got a licensure. If you're an RN, you're an LPC, I mean, that's always my first thing. I know I'm not medically trained, but I am trained in a lot of areas. So, what do I do with that? This will, this is your good Samaritan. It says if you, get this, if you choose to give it out of good faith, you're protected. If you choose not to give it out of good faith, you're protected. That's how it's written. Either way. But now, we have one of these OTC over the counter. We'll talk about that too. But that just happened last month. Okay, so a little history about naloxone. <laughs> naloxone was created back in 61. Uh, they found out that it would help with the constipation that opioids cause. It's a good drug. It's a good, good thing. In 71, they approved it to reverse opioid overdoses. In the 90s, remember, that's what was happening. We had all the epidemics. In 95, this is very interesting, up in upstate New York, some genius decided, hey, the users, the people who are ODing, are not walking in our ERs and saying, hey, I'm ODing. Oh, they're not, and they're not going to the doctor's office going, hey, I'm ODing. I'm in danger of an OD. What can we do? So they piloted these take-home naloxone kits and gave it to the people who were out on the streets among the people who are most at risk. And it worked. So it became a protocol on the ambulances. So now it's a protocol. If somebody's unresponsive, now the, uh, I have since changed my verbiage because I had EMT in the training and that was not their protocol. So I try to be careful to say, most of the time, when you've got an unresponsive person, they will give uh, naloxone. And in the medical facilities, you'll get it if somebody's not breathing. And this can be on any opioid. Yes. <coughs> Whoever else says, yes, we're going there. Did you make that? me. Awesome. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so these are the FDA approved injectables, which is syringe. Uh, nasal auto injector, which I'm going to show you. We have it here. And as of March 29, Big Pharma, Narcan, which is naloxone, is the only one that's over the counter. When they wrote the bill and asked for it to be approved, they only asked for the four milligram. Narcan is the only four milligram naloxone out there. So we won't get started on Big Pharma. But they're over the counter. That should be hitting the counter any minute. They were, it takes a minute to get that repackaging uh, coded like it needs to be coded and worded like it needs to be worded so that FDA is approved, or FDA is covered and everything. But uh, yeah, so that was OTC now. Okay, and we're at, we'll talk about all of them. There's down. Okay, so signs of opioid overdose. I hope you never have to use these. I hope I never have to use these, but this is what it is. Unresponsive is one of the first things, especially for lay people. 
If you're medically trained, you're going to go straight for the small pupils. You're going to open their eyes. You're going to hit their, probably tap their sternum. But what you need to keep in mind is unresponsive. What is unresponsive? Hey, hey. You know, if you know their name, hey, Angela. It's not your name, is it? Because that would be creepy. <laughs> I don't know her, but that would be super creepy. But anyway, you get, hey, hey, Angela, you know, can you hear me? Unresponsive, unresponsive. Decreased breathing, small pupil snoring, gurgling, pale blue skin, or sweating. These are all signs that somebody is in distress, possibly in an overdose state. Now, I added this for you. How do opioids work? Opioids look like a chemical in your brain and your body. They attach to parts of these nerve cells that are called opioid receptors. I know that choice of words, but whoever named it was a long time ago. So these opioid receptors, they're in your body because we, we actually release a natural opioid. Endorphins, you know, dopamine, we release. The receptors are called mu, del delta, and kappa. The mu receptor is the one that's most responsible for the opioids, pleasurable effects, and the ability to relieve pain. So mu is the receptor it, where you're going to see most of the activity with opioids. Opioids keep that in to the thought process. Okay. That way it's going to be, you're not going to be tested on that, right? No. But anyway, mu. Uh, I, I remembered his mu, cow. I don't know. I have that funny word, you know, association, but that's how I remember it. But anyway. So the opioids affect the brain and nervous system through the mu, opioid receptors, the limbic system, which controls your emotions. That's where the opioid calms you down to high, pleasure, relaxation, contentment. Talk to some users that fentanyl is their, their drug of choice, and they will tell you that it's the best feeling they've ever had over sexual activity and other things that are very pleasurable. So they will tell you. So it's affecting this. Brain stem, which controls your breathing. Stop coughing, it reduces feeling the pain. Remember what we said about OD? We're gonna go back and relate it. Spinal cord. So it, it receives, okay, the spinal cord receives the messages from the body that tells the brain what to do. So when you're an OD with an opioid, you're not getting the message to breathe. You see, you're, you're unresponsive. You're not, you couldn't be breathing. You are gurgling, possibly you might have vomited. Snoring, you're trying to breathe. Gurgling, trying to swallow. You're not getting your signals. Possibly. How naloxone works is an antagonist, which means it reverses it. It actually goes and knocks the opioid off of the receptor and sets on it. So it does a really cool thing. The problem or the challenge is, is that the opioid is stronger than the naloxone and has a longer life. So it will just sit out here and wait and then come back. Sit out here and wait. So whenever the naloxone is working, should work within two to three minutes, you should see some kind of response from them. If not, you can give it every, you can give more doses. We'll get to that in just a second. But that's how it works. It knocks it off. Remember that it stays up there. It can come back down. All right, so it's a temporary situation, temporary treatment. It's very temporary. It will last 30 to 90 minutes, depending on body weight, tolerance, what they've taken, how much they've taken, what's in the system, what's going on with the body. Naloxone may promote a withdrawal because it knocks it off. When they come back, they're not going to be happy for two reasons. You've just put them right back into overdose, basically. And they don't know what the heck just happened. They lost time. Somebody likened it to they're coming out of a coma and they've lost, they don't know what's going on. And if people are around them and things going on, they're scared, they're combative. <clears throat> so in the ER, what happens, so you, you automatically call 911. We'll talk about the procedures in a minute. 
But what happens when your ambulance shows up or your medical professional, they give a smaller dose. Okay, the smallest we have up here is four milligrams. They're going to give it as small as 0.4 because of a lot of different reasons. They're going to slowly bring them out of their overdose state because they don't want to fight with this person. They're, they're not trained. They don't want to fight. They're, they're EMTs. You don't want to fight anyway. But they're going to bring them down to, and also to not trigger an overdose where they might vomit <clears throat> and then choke again, then you've got a total different medical issue. They just bring them down so much slower. We don't have that option. This is our best prevention that we can offer at a layman, and this is fine. It's fine, but you've got medical next level coming right behind you, okay? All right, so time is of the essence. You've got four to six minutes. If somebody's down, non responsive, four to six minutes before actually four, error to the shock, before brain damage starts. Okay, because then you lack of oxygen. Uh, overdose is dangerous, especially to the brain stem. And breathing can cause, you know, lack of breathing death. But that's a long time. If you're in a situation like that, I, I've been in a few like that. It feels like forever. You're like, what time is it? One minute from what you just asked. So don't let the minute scare you. When you're in it, you're trained, it's going to be okay. All right, so what we've got now, I'm going to go back here. All right, so you've got somebody unresponsive, and uh, you roll up. This is in the Narcan. You roll up, you ask them, you know, are you okay? Are you okay? They don't, they don't uh, respond. This is what naloxone looks like, or this is what Narcan looks like. Oh, don't have a blister pack in there. No, that's fine. You have, there are two of these in each box. I don't know how you guys are gonna have them stored here. You'll know where they're stored. Dr. T and them are doing an amazing job of getting you protocol. You'll know exactly what to do. I'm just training you on how to administer it. You'll know where they are. You'll know what to do. Uh, but anyway, there's no priming. There's no nurses here, but nurses, you prime. This is no priming. So what you would do is you would roll them over, and you would administer this in the nostril. Just pick a nostril and just spray. And one, it's one and done. Throw it away. That's it. There's one in there. It's four milligrams. You can give that every two to three minutes. So we always recommend you have two somewhere. You can give that every two to three minutes until they respond. But always go to the next level of care, 911. You'll have your procedures on how to handle it here. We don't teach CPR, uh, depending on what your protocols are. Uh, just know what you're gonna do. I know what I'm gonna do in my head. Just know what you're gonna do if it happens. Okay, so one, wait, see if they're responsive. It should react within two to three minutes. Now remember, if you have somebody that has vomited, they could have all kinds of stuff in their nose that clog it up. So you're going through that. If they're not breathing, it's not getting in their system yet. So you may have to do an additional. Also, the strength of fentanyl on the streets. Okay? So that's any questions on how to administer that one? Okay. It's the same thing with coloxidone. But coloxidone is eight milligrams per. You guys do not have coloxidone here. You've got none. Okay? All right, so the other thing that we have that I, I do want to show you, you, will, you do not have this on your campus, but this works just like an EpiPen. So you take it out, it's in its own sharps container. You take it out, you open it, you jab it in here, just like you would an EpiPen in the thighs. <laughs> My tester. <laughs> Trust me, I'm always like that. My tester. The real ones are over there. Put it in, administer it, take it off, put it back, put it back in there. It's a Sharpie. Now, this one is five milligrams, but it goes straight into the bloodstream. So there's pros and cons to a lot of it. You've got four milligrams in the nose, nostril. You've got five in the bloodstream, and then you've got eight. They're all covered. Oh, and we did find out the insurance does cover some of these. So, any questions on how to administer that? 
But the injectable V, if they're not breathing, is that what that's for? It's whatever you've got in your okay. possession. I have only just because I was given a box of them, and I, I want to train on everything that's out there. I just want you to know what's out there. So if you've got it, whatever you're used to, you actually, you can go to the uh, pharmacy and buy a vial of it and keep syringes with you if you want it. That's what I was wondering. Can you get all of this like at Walmart yeah. or Walgreens or something? If they've got it stopped, but I'll tell you what they have is they have, remember the one I showed you <laughs> that look like a little, well, like you'll get a vial. But you can order that off of uh, more, more Narcan, please. You can, as citizens. Just tell them you want that. Actually, that's more readily available right now than the Narcan. Do you have to talk to the pharmacist to get it, or is it yeah. on the shelf? You have to walk up there. This will be the only one that will be over the counter right now. Mm -hmm. It's the only one that's approved to be over the counter. And about how much does it cost, do you know? I don't know what the, o the OTC price is going to be. I know on Good Samaritan, before it went OTC, it was 40 something dollars. Yeah. The Zimpi is still at 100 something. Unless your insurance covers it. I will tell you this, that, uh, that the doctors, if you're in a pay, pay management doctor, they have started giving Narcan. Every time they give you a, a script for uh, any kind of opioid, they're giving you Narcan. So it's out there. Uh, I want to uh, talk a little bit about fentanyl exposures because when this first started, there was some myths about fentanyl. When, okay, remember Drew? Okay, Drew OD. Well, they got into the hospital. They revived him. They started a drip. They revived him. Drew woke up. Drew was like 6'5". I don't know how big. Big old boy. He woke up, took everything out of his arm, went back home. And Kelly's like, that's not a good idea. We live up here in Poolville. You know, we don't have good, it's not quick response. We have a response, not good. He went back home, OD again, because he jumped right back on, and he did not survive. Now, Narcan sitting right there. Not only that, but the first responding PD had Narcan on his belt and chose not to use it. Now, there's no animosity. Callie spends her life training. We don't know why, and it doesn't matter why because he, but this could possibly be why. A year ago, yeah, a year ago, two Florida cops roll up on a van, open the door, this powder comes out, it's all filmed, this powder comes out, gets on them, and they're, they're the ones down. Male and female, the female's down. She's got all these overdose symptomology, blah, blah, blah. blah. Well, come to find out, DEA found it and took it down immediately. It was, a, it was not necessarily true. Yes, she was down. Yes, she had some unresponsive types of, but she had a full panic attack. <clears throat> if anybody's ever witnessed a panic attack, it acts just like some of this symptomology. It was not. And this is why. Fentanyl absorbs extremely poorly through the skin, meaning if the powder sits on my skin, it's going to take it a minute a long minute, more than a street minute to get through. Matter of fact, if I inhaled fentanyl 200 minutes, over an hour, two hours, <coughs> it would only give me a therapeutic dose. Not enough to put me in an OD stage. But always use precaution and always be ready. With that being said, uh, we were at, uh, oh, doesn't matter, Great Brown Colleyville. And she said, what if we walk up and somebody's got paraphernalia around them and powder on their face. Don't touch it. Just don't touch it. I'm not laughing at the question. I mean, it's kind of like, well, what do you, uh, don't touch it. You know, you can administer this from a distance and not touch anything if you're worried about it. Now, if you're on a response team, you may have gloves and what have you in your, I don't know. <coughs> but this is the facts from American um, College of Medical Textile, uh, Toxicology. I have a question. Okay. Oh, one second. I'm confused because Sorry. you're saying if it's inhaled, it, it takes longer for it to be ingested, but if they're lacing hot with it. And oh, but they're inhaling hot. a bunch of it. When she opened the door, it just come out on her and it was in her skin. Oh, I see. Yeah. It's a totally different, yeah. No, very good. Thank you for saying that, because I'll try to work it differently next time. Yeah, if I'm vaping, or if I'm taking a hit, 
of marijuana, I'm taking that hit, and I'm going to take a hit, a, a long drawn hit. And if I'm, I'm vaping it, I am, I've got the pure liquid fentanyl in there. Yeah, that's a good point. Thank you for bringing that up. I'll try to do a better job of wording that. Thanks for catching that. Does that make sense now? Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Thank you. Okay, so facts. It does block opioids. <laughs> Anyone of any age, they've given it to infants before. It, it's, you're not going to harm them. No max dose you can get of it every two, two to three minutes. It's protected by law. This is the best. There's zero side effects. <coughs> if I give it to somebody that's having cardiac arrest, zero side effects. If I give it to somebody that's on a psychotropic, no side effects. If I give it to somebody that's uh, uh, alcohol, uh, alcohol poisoning, no side effects. There are absolutely no side effects of the drug. Of naloxone. Okay, now back to somebody else. Okay, naloxone has no effect on all of these in their unaltered stage state. That is key. Okay, a benzoid, which is a Xanax, you just saw the Xanax, they were altered. But if I had a pure Xanax and I OD'd on a Xanax, this is not going to help. It's not going to knock that off of the opioid receptors. But if I'm buying a street, Xanax, yeah. Stimulants, marijuana, it's not laced. Sleep agents and alcohol. To the best of our knowledge, it's not in alcohol right now. But I don't put anything past. We don't know. You just don't know. Storage of naloxone. Try to keep it in the original packaging. You guys will probably have to take it out of the box. It's in a blister pack. It's this, but it's in a blister pack with the instructions. So there's two of these in each of these. You guys will have it strategically placed around the campus, you'll know. Uh, expiration date on the product. Yes, each product, I think y'all's is 2025, and I did take the other two boxes over there. 2025, uh, but studies show, they studied uh, a product that was 10 years old and it still was effective. However, because of the procedures, and the protocols at ISDs and universities and what have you probably cannot keep it here. If it ever expires, let us know. We'll trade it off. We've got community partners who can still use it. Uh, keep it out of extreme heat or cold. What do we say? It evaporates at 102, 104, and it might freeze at 32. What was it? 32, I think is what we said. It was on a packaging. It was 32. It was 32. Okay, so availability. Standing RX, that's your 40, SB 4262, or 1462. Uh, good RX. Oh, I had somebody ask, and I don't know the answer to this. Just move your thought. Somebody said, if I'm going through uh, security at an airline, can I carry it? I don't know the answer. I still don't know. I haven't had anybody answer it yet. But what I was told is recite the Senate Bill 1462, I carry it. I don't know if anybody would ever even want to carry it on a plane. But. Uh, good RX. Which is a really good place to get it because it's really inexpensive. It's less expensive. Like I said, again, I don't know how much it is over the counter because it hasn't hit the counters yet. As soon as I know, it'll be updated. March 29, Narcan was uh, approved to be OTC. Community based distribution programs such as ours. We use uh, more Narcan, please, but something is stopping that pipeline. I order every month 48. Well, the last three months they've not shipped and they just sent me uh, my notice that they're shipping me 24. So our pipeline, but we've got community partners, so we always try to, if we, uh, if we do the training, we make sure you guys have a supply. And then local health departments. And like I said, if you go to a pain management or a doctor who's giving out the script, there's a good chance that they're going to give you no as well. Okay, I do want to leave you with this because this is a lot of stuff. This is what the DEA has done this year alone. And for 2023, the DEA federal partners indicted 28 people. Now, I stand corrected. Last time I spoke, I thought the bill had already been passed that makes it a murder charge. If they, if the drug can be uh, traced back to the dealer and it killed the person, it could be a murder charge. That is in the, the Senate. 
pass the House, it's in the Senate. But Abbott is trying to get that because then it makes it a stronger penalty for the, the drug uh, dealer. Okay, but in, four, in April alone, so in May, they had, they've got this Operation Last Mile, 3,337 3, operatives, associates, and distributors have been arrested, and fentanyl and methadone distribution centers have been dismantled. So they're trying. It's still not, but they're trying. But, oh yeah, I always like to, it wasn't probably two years ago, if you saw a seize, seizure like this, you saw guns. They were moving guns and money, laundering money. <laughs> I see no guns there. They're moving the money makers. And that's the pills. All right, so one pill really can kill you. That's what we, we try to stand off of. And the only medicine that's safe is something that's prescribed to you from a pharmacist, from a doctor. Uh, DEA warns that basically the DEA will sit up here and Chavez will tell you they're all deadly. They're all deadly. Uh, any questions? There was one screen you showed where the, it showed what the Narcan is useful when it will help. Can you show that screen again? Is it just opioids? It is opioids, and remember fentanyl, fentanyl is an opioid. Now, this is, uh, yes, let me go back. It wasn't very close. Okay, this, this is what it won't help on. Yes. But I want you to keep in mind that these drugs are being sold on the street as fakes, mm -hmm. which have opioid, which has fentanyl in it. Mm -hmm. So don't get, yeah, great question. But we can't get tripped up on, oh, it's just a Xanax. I bought a Xanax. Well, but if you bought it from somebody that's not a legal, a legal distributor, a, a pharmacist, then it could very well be. And this will reverse that. It has a potential to reverse it. Okay, this is our QR code. Don't feel an obligation if you want to. This is feedback. This helps me do a better job, like explain that better. Dr. T gave me some really good feedback last time on explaining more about the brain. Did that help to add that? opioid receptor information in there. It, it helped me when I was researching it to do a better job and to understand how to explain it better to you. Any questions? Thank you. Okay. What about in states where, with this crisis going on, what about in states where like marijuana is legal? What are, where are they seeing in those states? It's funny you bring that up. Their drug dealer is handing out Narcan. Oh, here's your weed, here's your Narcan. I forgot about that. Well, I mean, That's exactly what they're doing. But do you yeah. think that with it being legal, that they would be, DEA would be looking at what they are distributing? Well, and they are. They are. There's so much more going on than what we know. I know I can't even speak to it. But no, it's a great, it's a great. But I had heard that that's what the, the drug dealers were doing, especially in some of those states. Here, we know you might die. So here, here's where we're going to keep coming back because that's their harm reduction. Huh? That keeps their their uh, pipeline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great question. Was that okay?